All right, so I'm outside of the Bell Centre in Montreal. It's April the 15th, 2024, just after 7 o'clock at night. I'm going in there to watch Monday Night Raw. Of course, uh, this is going to be a bit of a different review. I'm going to review the show, but of course, uh, from a perspective of someone who went there. Now, we've got some great things up. Sami Zayn, yay, our Montrealer is defending the Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable. Boo, now I like Chad most nights, but tonight against Sami, not so much. Um, also, uh, Liv Morgan supposedly uh, going to confront Rio Ripley or vice versa. Heard some stuff on the internet. I hope that's not true. Uh, we also have Jey Uso versus Finn Balor. Yeet versus someone who doesn't even know what Yeet means. Um, he said something else online. Um, and of course, we have uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus um, uh, Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nut. A whole bunch of good stuff tonight. It's going to be fun. Let's head inside. Welcome to Silo Voice Wrestling on YouTube, the Silo Voice Wrestling podcast from Silo Voice Studios in Montreal. I'm Jason C. McLean. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Of course, ring the bell for notifications. Usually I do analysis on wrestling, opinion pieces, some predictions. I don't usually do show reviews unless it's something big like WrestleMania or a show that I went to like I did last night, April 15th, 2024, WWE Raw at the Bell Center in Montreal. The place was packed. Uh, I was excited. The whole crowd was excited. It was a typically hot Montreal crowd, very opinionated crowd. Um, and I'm going to review this from the perspective of somebody there, in addition to actually reviewing the show as a usual watcher of the show. So we started off with Rhea Ripley. Oh, no, 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 no. You started off with Rhea Ripley. We started off with Natalia versus Zaya Lee. And Ludwig Kaiser versus Otis. Yes, before Raw went live, we got two matches from the show called Main Event. In case you watch this show, I'm not going to tell you who won. It's no spoilers. Uh, I will tell you, though, that there was a bit of a delayed reaction when the Alpha Academy music hit. I think everyone, including myself, were waiting to make sure it was, in fact, Otis coming out before cheering. On the off chance, it might be Chad Gable. Now, I think we were waiting on potentially cheering Gable until after he lost to Sami Zayn. More on that later. Anyways, there was also a taping of a three-minute match, specifically three-minute time limit match for the show Speed. That's only on X slash Twitter. I'm, it was JD McDonough versus Ricochet. I'm not going to tell you who won, obviously, because I think that show only shows up online tomorrow, Wednesday. So no spoilers. But then after introducing Pat McAfee and Michael Cole, everyone cheering, everyone getting ready, Raw went live on the air, and of course, along with the rest of you, we started with Rhea Ripley, and Mommy was not in a good mood. She came to the ring in a very bad mood, wearing a sling. Now, I had seen things online earlier in the day, so I kind of figured what was going to happen, especially seeing as Adam Pierce was in the ring. Not everyone had seen it, including some of the people I went with, but anyways, she was there to vacate the Women's World championship because she had been injured the previous week for real uh when Liv Morgan attacked her backstage now the Montreal crowd including me uh started shouting bullshit bullshit there were bullshit chants there were thank you mommy chants uh and it was understandable those there were those chants because in storyline it makes sense yes she has a shoulder injury that's bad so she has to be out for a few months but Roman Reigns didn't defend the title for a few months and he still kept to keep his championship so it actually is kind of her getting screwed over storyline-wise. Of course, from a, a booking perspective, it, it actually makes perfect sense. Now, it's really bad, really unfortunate that a top star like Rhea Ripley or anyone really is injured with a shoulder injury. That's horrible when they're in their prime. But when she comes back, they can't hide the fact that she's technically going to be a heel. Now, yeah, Montreal is a different type of crowd. We uh, Everyone was cheering Rhea at WrestleMania because she wasn't out there with Dominic, even though she was against Becky Lynch. But Montreal is really unhinged. If we like someone, even if they're supposed to be a heel, we'll cheer as we uh, chanted bullshit and as we cheered for Rhea. But when she comes back, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to make her a heel. She could come out with Dominic Mysterio as well as Tom and Nick Mysterio uh, all hugging each other. And even if they talked, I'm pretty sure people would still cheer. So... 
I don't know what that's going to do for Judgment Day. There was a nice segment backstage with Judgment Day where she was hugging, and they were smart to only let Damian Priest talk because he's another tweener who might become a babyface soon. But yeah, she's going to be massive when she comes back. She's going to get a huge babyface pop. And they were able to actually move the title off her, have her fight for the title to get it back without her ever losing so she doesn't appear weak. Also, uh, Montreal, myself included, booed Liv Morgan when she came out. Now, first off, I like Liv Morgan. She's actually one of my favorites. She's definitely one of the top stars on Raw. I was hoping to see her maybe with a title or again or in another main event picture. But in kayfabe, in storyline, which I'm in in the audience, when I'm in an audience, I'm cheering and booing based on what I see and what how I'm interpreting the story. So yeah, I booed Liv Morgan. I, and honestly, I think a heel turn is great because while I do think Liv Morgan's great, I really enjoyed booing her. And I think maybe doing this, you know, okay, you had to do this because she was injured, but the, the happenstance of this happening in Montreal where the crowd clearly was going to let Liv Morgan know what they think and let Rhea, Rhea Ripley know what they think is perfect for, for storytelling. Now, I think Nia Jax winning the title might make more sense and Liv fighting her, but no, you want Liv to be the heel. Depending on how long Rhea's out, you want Liv winning the championship and her eventually losing it to Rhea. So, I mean, it's an unfortunate situation. It's a kind of a sad start to Raw. And I'm sure the people who didn't know what had happened based on the internet were surprised that Rhea was the one coming out first. But it was actually a very important start to the show. And I think we've got an incredible, even better than it could have been feud out of it between Rhea and Liv when Rhea comes back. Next up, Sheamus returned. He, of course, got a massive crowd pop in Montreal. He's over here. He's over everywhere. And, of course, how can we miss you when you haven't gone away? Well, he went away, and he's back. He had his old theme music. He's clearly not brawling brutes, Sheamus. I think this is great. And, of course, he was not there to do a, a speech or talk or call out somebody as they thought he might be. But, no, he was there for a match. He, he gets right into the matches, right into the banger, the banger after banger. And he had a banger with Ivar. Now, it's an interesting note that the last time I was in this same building – for, to watch wrestling was at a SmackDown live airing right before Elimination Chamber. And the best match of the night was Sheamus and Drew McIntyre versus the Viking Raiders, one of them being Ivar. It's kind of interesting that we started off with a, another banger match with two of the same people. It was a great match. Of course, Ivar was going to lose. It was Sheamus's return. But, you know, Sheamus at first tried to do the beats of the Baron. He, he missed it, but then eventually he got it again. The whole crowd chanted along with him. Uh, he seemed very happy to be back. He did some impressive, uh, you know, with, with the big men slapping man meat stuff with Ivar. You can only do that with Ivar. But Sheamus is, of course, very impressive when he's lifting up Ivar, suplexing him the whole deal. Sheamus won. And after he went around to the announce table and had some fun with the announcers, it was a great return. And I'm glad that myself and the rest of Montreal gave Sheamus the warm return welcome he deserved. Then it was time to play the game. We knew something was up. During the commercial break, before Triple H came uh, came out, they were setting up the ring. They were putting down a carpet. They had a podium. We're like, what's going on? Is there a new belt? Are they going to give Cody a new belt? What's going on? And then uh, when they came back from commercial, they were focusing on the announcers, not shooting the ring. And then sure enough, Triple H's music hit. Now, we, of course, exploded. We were very excited to see him because... In this day and age, when Triple H comes to the ring, you know something important is about to happen right before your very eyes. Also, he's not someone I expected to see this night. I Maybe, obviously, I expected him at the Raw after Mania, not a week uh, after that. I thought maybe he was going to talk about the draft, but we saw the belt. Anyways, comes out. Uh, he announces the uh, World Tag Team Championships instead of the Raw Tag Team Championships, which is an excellent choice. He brings, uh, With Adam Pearce, they bring out... Um, our truth and the Miz, awesome truth, uh, and they present them with these belts. Now, the belts themselves look a lot better than the previous ones. Those things were ugly. These ones aren't. Of course, they look a lot like a lot of the other championships, but I'm fine with that. Of course, this segment also involved some great R Truth comedy. It also involved uh, thinking Triple H was actually Tommaso Ciampa. And The Miz interrupting and trying to get things back on track. And, of course, The Miz got a huge crowd pop when he spoke French. Uh, and he got the crowd chanting, we, oui, 
course, Miz's wife, Maurice, is from Montreal, so he did know French a little bit better, better than some of the other Americans on this show. But it was a hilarious segment. It was really over with the crowd. Uh, crowd was, I was very excited. I loved it. In the early part of the show, this was a, a really fun segment after a great match and after a really kind of sad intro with Rhea Ripley. Things were happening, and I'm glad that we have these new titles. Uh, and I'm glad they're calling it the World Tag Team Championship. I'm presuming on SmackDown they're going to call those belts the WWE Tag Team Championship. It allows them to change shows. Belts look a lot nicer. Funny segment. Can't really complain. And, of course, Triple H walked off because our truth was just not understanding things, as he usually does. And then uh, Pierce introdu introduces the triple threat match to determine the number one contenders for the World Tag Team Championships. This match was DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus the Creed Brothers, Brutus and Julius, and the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. This was a fun match. Uh, the crowd was chanting, this is awesome at some point. At one point, we started chanting Triple H when Ciampa was in there. He even did a pedigree. We tried to chant HBK at Gargano, but he wasn't in for that long. All the teams look good. Um, at one point, there was this massive pileup with DIY on the bottom. Not sure who would have won if there had been a pin. Maybe it would have been a fatal four-way. Who knows uh, for the title? Anyways, um, the Creeds look strong, but of course, they didn't get to do the, the Brutus bomb. They were stopped. Um, New Day got some good teamwork in. DIY did, but eventually, it's back and forth. Really exciting match. Eventually, DIY won and are the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. R-Truth and Miz were at ringside at commentary. I might watch that back to actually hear what their commentary was like. I'm sure that was fun. Uh, I kind of thought the IOI was going to win. They make the most sense in this situation. That's a pretty good match for Backlash. Um, and again, the crowd continued to be excited. Of course, it's a Montreal crowd. The next match, not so much. Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. Of all the matches this night, this was the one that the crowd was dead for. We we were hardly making any noise. Of course, it was a match we've seen a variation of several times. And I think the big takeaway here is that Indy Hartwell finally embraced her darker side and is now healing with Candice LeRae. This was a, uh, a good program, a good heel turn, but they should have solved it right away, made them both heels right away rather than let people think that Indy is just completely unaware of what's going on. Who knows? Maybe it'll pay off in the future. At one point, the crowd started chanting, on s'en calice, which is, we don't give an F uh, in French. I don't know if those uh, chants made it to the broadcast, but if they did, they probably wouldn't be censored because it's French and USA Network doesn't know uh, uh, French swear words. Anyways, this match was like maybe a good bathroom break match. I don't know. I mean, I like both these uh, teams. I just think that they should maybe do more, progress a little bit faster. Right around now is also when we got a uh, between the commercial break tease at the return of Uncle Howdy, very similar to the uh, Bray Wyatt tease. The screen started going all fuzzy. They played a song. Now, I'm not sure if that song's under copyright, and I don't want a copyright strike, so I'm not going to play my uh, fan footage here. I might share it on my uh, Twitter or X, at Jason C. McLean. Because they're, they're, I guess, a little bit less stringent with copyrights than YouTube. Anyways, um, yeah, that continued. They did it at SmackDown. They do it at Raw. We're definitely looking for the return of Uncle Howdy, maybe with Eric Rowan and other former members of the, the Wyatt family. Of course, the crowd had the uh, fireflies going on their cell phones. And then Andrade versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Andrade was new to this crowd. Uh, he'd only recently returned. He did get some cheers on his way out. I don't think it really helped uh, his case that the um, uh, show went to commercial and we got a whole thing with uh, Samantha Irvin, who was great. I'm so happy she was uh, the host of this show and the ring announcer for it. But she was like talking to the crowd, showing photos of uh, best uh, signs in the crowd. And then when we come back from commercial, it's a whole segment, an interview segment with Chad Gable training for his match with the Creed brothers. And then back to the ring, and Andrade's music resu resumes. Uh, my brother, who I was there with, said that's kind of a dick move. Anyways, I'd seen them do that to Gunther before, but he was a heel. Doing that to a babyface, that seemed a bit odd. Anyways, um, one thing this crowd definitely was ready to do was boo Dominic Mysterio. So while Andrade didn't have the 
pop maybe he needed at the start. Mysterio, of course, had that massive heel heat. And the crowd started to warm up to Andrade during the match. At one point, there was a Canadian destroyer on the apron. That was really rough. That was it's a really good match. Uh Dominic looked his perfect heel south. Andrade looked strong, and Andrade eventually got the win. I think he's a character that still needs to be built more as a baby face, but he's going to good places. Next up, Chelsea Green. And of course, Piper Niven versus Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Now, Montreal is known for its party scene, so I, I really think Carter and Chance will be better off on SmackDown because they could go party, hit the club after the show instead of a weekend of clubbing in Montreal, and then they have to... I'm kidding. I know they probably don't really go to the club. Anyways, um, it was a good match. Um, Carter and Chance managed to do a keg stand at one point, but of course, the big story of the match was Piper Niven just wrecking everybody and Chelsea Green stealing a win with a roll-up. Uh, Green and uh, Niven are actually pretty good when they're not facing the greatest, most dominant female tag team of the last decade of Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Yeah, they're more in their lane this time, and that's good. Uh, as far as the crowd, it's kind of mixed. I personally, I'm a huge Chelsea Green fan, so I was cheering Chelsea, Chelsea. I don't know if anybody else was. The crowd was into it, uh, but again, I don't think they really uh, picked their horse in this one. It was a fun match in the middle of the show. Then we got a Liv Morgan backstage interview with Kathy Kelly, and I had talked about this earlier, but they, of course, talked about the fact that Liv got booed. The crowd kept booing Liv. Liv did make a very good case, like, why are you so mad at me when you weren't mad at Rhea? It's also funny to note that she was standing in front of a wall of uh, Montreal Canadien greats, in fact, they really showed the Bell Center very and Montreal very well throughout this whole show. And one of those people was Saku Koivu, and some people next to me started chanting, Saku, Saku, but I guess they stopped because it didn't catch on. That would have just made no sense to the Americans watching, maybe even a lot of Canadians watching. Anyways, it was a good segment. Crowd started booing, and you could tell that you were going to something big. Well, actually, we already knew we were going to something big because they had previewed it before their commercial break. Next up. The new undisputed WWE champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. As with Triple H, the crowd pop was huge. And so were the fireworks this time on an arguably much smaller set. They're going with a smaller set, with a, which I think is a good choice. But the power, fireworks definitely seemed to overpower it. We were all ready to do the, whoa, and we all did it. People were singing along with the song. This was a huge reaction to Cody. And I, mean, I think we knew he wasn't wrestling tonight. Uh, he even said that he's there hanging out because Adam Pierce is letting him because he's technically a SmackDown superstar. There's, of course, the draft. But I think we were all just really happy to see him. He, of course, as I predicted, started off by asking, what do you want to talk about in French? Uh, definitely perfect baby face for this crowd, for any crowd, really. Incredibly over. People were cheering. It, it took him a while to start talking because people just kept cheering. Cody, Cody, the whole deal. Uh, he did thank Seth Rollins, which is good. That wasn't an oversight. Uh, he brought up uh, The Rock. He said The Rock's going to be around for a little bit longer, he thinks, which I think more than one match at least. I think that's what we all think as well, too. Um, and, of course, he mentioned what happened with the bloodline on, thir on Friday, uh, the changes in the bloodline. And, of course, he brought out main event, Jay Uso. Jay comes out, of course, to a massive pop. Everyone's doing the... Uh, Jey Uso gesture. I was doing it. The whole crowd was... I got my brother, Joe, to do it, who was there at the show with me. Also, my friend Jerry, we were all doing Uso gesture. Pat McAfee was doing it. Almost slipped off the desk. I didn't hear what he was saying, but I could imagine him saying... Uh, like uh, Complaining to Michael Cole. Michael Cole complaining to him. Anyways, basically the whole ending of the show from Cody's entrance to the end was nonstop. High points. Excitement. It was, it was really good. Really well booked. A really solid last hour of the show. Uh, Cody, of course, puts over the fact that Jay is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, said soon Raw will be yours, makes a few more dad jokes, including I'll be yeeting you later. And importantly, uh, Jay uh, tells him he doesn't need him uh, to be in his corner for the match. He's handling it on his own. His match, of course, against Finn Balor. And that was very important. That explains why Cody didn't come back a couple more times in the night. Uh, so then the match starts. Main event, Jey Uso versus Finn Balor of the Judgment Day. 
Match starts quickly. Uh, Finn's pretty dirty. Come, his music starts playing, but he comes from behind, which I saw. I don't know if that they showed that on television. We saw him coming from behind. Uh, attacks Jay. Match starts. Throughout all these matches, I'm playing a little game like, when are they on commercial break? I don't know. Uh, I was able to tell a few times here. Good, solid match. Eventually, uh, Jay wins clean with the Uso splash. Damian Priest comes out after Jay's celebrating. Uh, shows his title, Finn attacks him, uh, Dirty Dom and JD come from under the ring. They're beating down Jay. Uh, now, obviously, he's already told Cody not to come out and help him, but he manages to escape. And he starts heading up through the crowd out of the building, which leads to one of the best sequences I've ever seen in WWE. We follow Jay through the concourse, past all the merch tables, with a bunch of people trying to take photos with him. At one point, he shoves one guy away who was kind of going in for a selfie. He heads right out of the bell center. Uh, McAfee's saying, where is he going? He gets outside in front of the bell center, and he runs into Sami Zayn. Sami's looking up at the bell center sign, presumably. Jay starts looking up too, asks him what he's doing here. Sami says, 25 years ago, I saw my first match in this building. Uh, which I think was the Montreal Screwdrop, Survivor Series 97. And now I'm coming back as champion. Jay tells him to go get him. He says he's going to go back in, go in the same way he entered 25 years ago through the front door, goes in, knocks a recycling uh, container over at one point. Crowd's really excited, cheering him on. He's going through the crowd. He gets ready. He gets to the, the same entrance way Jay Uso came out of. His music starts playing. He enters the bell center again to a, well, the crowd's exploding from the moment you see him on camera. The crowd's exploding because we're all seeing this on the screens. And when he actually comes into the arena, his music starts playing. At one point, somebody gives him a Canadian flag, puts it on, wears it. He's going through the crowd. The camera's sort of following him. We're trying to follow him. At one point, the screens aren't following him because they're on commercial, cheering all throughout the commercial break. I think we might have missed something when the show came back. I don't know. Um... I, my brother actually said to me at this point, hey, imagine if you were in that walkway, you see Jey Uso go out and you see what's happening on the screen. You know, Sammy's coming back the same way. Everyone's really excited. It was very exciting. It played just as well on the screens in the building as I'm sure it did on TV. Yes, I'm biased because I was there. I was part of it uh, and I'm from Montreal, but it was one of the best WWE entrances I've ever seen. Of course, we get to the ring. There's a little uh, clip from backstage of, Chad Gable uh, talking with Bronson Reed. Bronson tells him, oh, whether you win or Sammy wins, I'm next. Something to that effect. Gable's music hits. People are booing. Myself, I was politely applauding. I'm like, as long as he doesn't turn heel, I'm going to cheer for him later. But at this point, I'm going to politely uh, applaud, though, cheer massively for Sammy. Uh, Samantha Irvin does the ring introduction. Boos for Gable. Explosive cheers for Sammy. And the match starts. And this was a banger of a match. There were German suplexes. Uh, there were ankle locks. Of course, haluva kicks. Uh, it told a very interesting story. At one point, Sammy uh, hurt his uh, his leg, and Gable was definitely exploiting it. Um, not exactly full heel at this point, but a little bit heelish, you know, exploiting an injury. Um, this was a, a classic, excellent Raw match, probably one of the better Raw matches I've seen, but of course, seeing it live, it's a whole different thing. And I, I was like, I was nervous. I was thinking, okay, there's no way they're going to take uh, Sammy's title away two weeks after he won it in his hometown. But then I remembered this is WWE. And under the old administration, there was almost this sort of cruelty factor of doing things like that to the hometown hero. I was like, okay, well, at least he's got his WrestleMania moment. But no, they weren't going to do it. This is Triple H. And, but I was nervous the whole time. I honestly thought Gable might win at some point, possibly by cheating or by being vicious, but no. Sammy got a uh, blue thunderbomb. I knew he wasn't going to win for that with that because he never wins with that, but and he didn't, but that was even exciting. I thought he might even win with that. Eventually, he he powers up. He like he does the the crowd's chanting ole, ole, ole the whole time. Sidebar, I wonder if people know that ole, ole, ole. Well, in Europe, that's like a soccer chant. That's actually what people chant at the Montreal Canadiens, the hockey team. So they chanted it at Cody Rhodes earlier and Triple H. I, I wonder if they thought that it was just for Sami Zayn 
or if that's just something Montreal fans do. Anyways, sidebar. Okay, back to the match. Yeah, eventually, Sami Zayn does get that Huluva kick. One, two, three, and still the place explodes. Everything's really happy. I'm like, okay, he does the handshake with uh, with Gable. Gable lifts up his hand. I'm like, okay, maybe the heel turn's not coming just yet. And just before Raw goes off the air, Gable attacks Sammy while he's hugging his wife and proceeds with the beatdown. Crowd starts booing. Now, I had said earlier, if you want to make Chad Gable a heel, having him turn on Sami Zayn in Montreal was the surefire way to make sure that there's no way the crowd uh, was going to side with him. And we did. We let him have it. Uh, the show went off the air. Um, people were chanting KO. People were thinking somebody might come out to help him, uh, especially if the show was off the air. But no, nobody came out to help him. Eventually, the well, people came out to help him, but it was the referees. It wasn't another superstar. The, the officials come in. Eventually, they get Gable off Sammy. The, the crowd starts chanting F you Gable, F you Gable, and eventually Gable leaves. And he's as he's about to leave, the crowd starts singing na 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 na. Hey hey, and Gable starts conducting it, and then he even does the thank you very cynically and leaves. Heel turn, solidified, complete. Uh, and then Sammy uh, eventually makes his way to his feet with the crowd cheering him on and he has a microphone and he says <laughs> Chad, I actually kind of get it. I understand. Now I understand how it felt for you to let down your family, to let down your friends, to let everyone down because guess what? This is my city. These are my people. They are my friends. And that is my family. Injuries heal, people. I just want you to know that as soon as this gets better, I am coming back to kick your bitch ass. In case you don't speak French, that at the beginning of that, he said, uh, we're not going to let that guy wreck our night. The rest was perfectly clear. Follow at Silo Wrestling on X at SVS Reviews on Instagram and Facebook and me at Jason C. McLean on X and Instagram. That's how you do a heel turn. Um, yeah, obviously nobody came in to save Sammy uh, at the end after the show went off the air because well, Jey Uso was already outside, Cody Rhodes had already been home. And Kevin Owens wasn't in town, but like, wow. So pumped that Sammy retained, and he's pumped again after that unfortunate beatdown. That's how you do a heel turn. Chad Gable's a heel. Gable's a, heel. a lot of monumental stuff happened at this Raw. Rhea Ripley's uh, had to vacate the title. We had we had the, the new tag team title. The Triple H segment was the best. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And I'll catch you next time for Silo Voice Studios in Montreal. I'm Jason C. McClain.